Hi, I'm Mr Parker and this is question 5 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from June 2013. For more questions on this exam paper, click the link here or check in the video description. Question 5. Particle P is projected with speed u meters per second from the top of a smooth inclined plane of length 2d meters. After its projection, P moves downwards along a line of greatest slope with acceleration 4 meters per second squared. At the instant 3 seconds after projection, P has moved halfway down the plane, and P reaches the foot of the plane 5 seconds after the instant of projection. In part 1, we need to form two simultaneous equations in U and D, and hence calculate the speed of projection of P and the length of the plane. So there's actually two things we want to work out in this question, the speed of projection and the length of the plane. So let's start by drawing a diagram. So what we've got so far is that the length of the plane is 2d. We also know the acceleration throughout the whole problem is 4 meters per second and it tells us that after 3 seconds it's halfway down the plane and after 5 seconds it's all the way down the plane. So what I'm going to do to start this problem is write down my values for suvat at t equals 3 and at t equals 5. So at t equals 3, we know that the particle is halfway down the plane, and because the plane is 2d meters long, then that means it is at a displacement d from the beginning. The initial speed is one of the quantities we're trying to find, so we'll leave that as u. We don't know the velocity. The acceleration is constant throughout the whole problem, that's 4 meters per second squared. And the time t here is 3 seconds. At t equals 5, we know it's reached the foot of the plane, so the displacement is 2d. We still have the initial velocity of u, and we still don't know the final velocity. We also know that the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, and this time t is 5 seconds. So in each of these cases, we've got two quantities we know, a and t, and two unknowns. So we can form two simultaneous equations here. To form these simultaneous equations, I'm going to use s equals ut plus half a t squared. I've chosen that one because it involves u, t, a and s. I'm not really interested in the velocity. So substituting these values into this formula, s is going to become d, u, t, well we don't know u but t is 3 so that becomes 3u plus half multiplied by a which is 4 multiplied by t squared which is 3 squared Let's simplify this down a bit, we get 3u, 3 squared is 9, multiply that by 4 is 36, half it we get 18. I'm going to call that equation 1. For the second equation, this time we've got 2d, and that's going to equal ut, in this case that's 5u, plus a half, multiplied by the acceleration which is 4, multiplied by the time squared which is 5 squared. Simplifying this, we're going to get 5 squared is 25, times 4 is 100, times that by half, we get 50. I'll call that equation 2. Now it's up to you how you go about solving these simultaneous equations. The way I'm going to do it is take equation number 1 and multiply it by 2. So every term in here I'm going to double, that gives me 2d equals 6u plus 36. Now I've got one equation here which has been slightly modified which is 2d equals and I've got this equation here which is 2d equals. So if they're both 2d on the left hand side then the right hand side must be equal as well and I can say that 6u plus 36 equals 5u plus 50. To solve this equation I'm going to subtract 5u from both sides that's going to leave me with u on this side and I'm also going to subtract 36 from both sides to get u equals 14 meters per second. Now all I've got to do is substitute my value for u back into one of these equations. I'm going to choose 1 because it's already got d equals, and I'm going to get d equals 3 lots of 14 plus 18, which is 60 metres. However, the length of the slope, remember, is 2d, so the whole length of the plane is 2 lots of 60, which is 120 metres. In part 2, I need to find the inclination of the plane to the horizontal. Diagram's going to be a bit more important this time. 
So let's think about the information we know about this plane. We know that it's smooth, so there's no friction going to be involved. We know that the acceleration down the slope is 4 meters per second squared. And the only forces acting on the particle are the weight downwards, and that's going to be mg. We don't know the mass here, but that's not actually going to matter. We've also got a normal contact force, which I'll call R just here as well. So in order to find this angle here, which we'll call theta, I'm going to resolve forces parallel to the slope. So we have a component of the weight going down the slope that is going to be mg sine theta. The normal contact force is perpendicular to that, so we don't need to include that here. So that's our only force that has any component down the slope. So that's going to equal mass times acceleration. And we know acceleration is 4, so that becomes 4 lots of m. Notice how both sides have an m, so we can cancel that out to get g sine theta equals 4. And sine theta is 4 over g. So to find theta, all we need to do is inverse sine of 4 over g. And that gives us 24.1 to 3 significant figures. Given that the contact force exerted on P by the plane has a magnitude of 6 newtons, calculate the mass of P. Well, the contact force is the resultant of any friction and the normal contact force acting on the particle. So because we've got no friction, the contact force in this case is just the normal contact force. So if we want to find the mass of P, and we know the value for R up here is 6, all we're going to do is resolve perpendicular to the slope. So we can figure out that this angle in here is theta by using a bit of basic trigonometry. And the component of the weight that's going into the slope, therefore, is going to be mg cos theta. In this case, theta is approximately 24.1. We've got the exact value in our calculator anyway. Notice how the component of the weight down the slope is mg sine theta, and that means that in the perpendicular direction, it's going to be mg cos theta. These are always opposite like that. We know this normal contact force R coming out of the slope is 6, so that's going to be minus 6. And we know that's going to be 0 because there's no acceleration perpendicular to the slope. The acceleration is down the slope. So from here we can do a little bit of rearranging and say that mg cos of 24.1 is 6. And if we divide through by g cos 24.1, we get m equals 6 over g cos 24.1 degrees. Now be careful here to use the exact value for this 24.1 that you calculated in this part of the question to avoid a rounding error. And that gives us 0.671 kilograms to three significant figures.